In Jesus' most agonizing moments before his crucifixion, he commanded Peter, James, and John to watch and pray. Jesus then went on to moments of fervent prayer in the garden. Unfortunately, those disciples failed in their assignment, and Jesus found them sleeping instead of praying. In this study, Evangelist Scott Pauley will lead us and challenge us to watch and pray, to pray faith-filled prayer for God to move and work in our generation. Be sure to listen after the study for details about a special prayer resource Scott is making available through this series. And now, let's join Scott Pauley. What do you know for sure today, my friend? Someone said there's nothing certain in this life but death and taxes. I beg to differ. Uh, No, my friend, as a believer, I know my sins are forgiven. I know my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. I know Christ lives in me. Let me tell you something else I know. I know that Jesus is coming again. In fact, uh, that absolutely does away with the idea that death is a certainty. Death is a possibility. Uh, The coming of Christ is a certainty. Some generation is going to be alive when Jesus comes again, and they will not go through the gate of death. They're going to go through the door of the the rapture of the church. I don't know about you. I'm excited. Either way, whatever the Lord chooses, uh, most Christians that I ask say that they would prefer to go by means of the rapture, uh, to be like uh, Elijah caught away in that chariot of fire, or Enoch who walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Uh, Mr. Spurgeon uh, once commented that he would prefer to go through the, the gate of death, and people puzzled by that asked why. He said because he wanted to feel what resurrection power felt like coursing through his body. Remember, the dead in Christ will rise first. I personally think whether you go through death or are raptured out, you are going to experience resurrection power because only resurrection power is going to take you from here to there, from earth to eternity. I know that my Redeemer lives. The oldest book in the Bible says, Job said that. Not only do I know that he lives, I know that he's coming again. And so we return today to Mark chapter 13, this great watch and pray passage. In our last study, we identified what we don't know. You've got to start with what you don't know. Let's just be honest. There's some things we can't wrap our minds around. Uh, we have finite minds. God is infinite. Uh, we, we can't see or think exactly like he does. We don't have perfect understanding on this side of the veil. And so one of the things we don't know is the exact timing. Three times in Mark 13, Jesus said, you don't know it and nobody knows it. But today we come to what we do know. If what we don't know is the timing of his return, what we do know is the certainty of his return. It's just like our Lord Jesus saying in Romans uh, that he will come shortly and bruise Satan under our feet, shortly. What is that word shortly? Shortly is not a definite time, but it is a definite promise. Uh, As a boy on on a trip calling out to dad from the back seat, how long, dad, how much longer on this car ride? How much longer do we have? And dad would say shortly. I hated that word because it didn't uh, give me enough specific information, but it was a definite promise we were going to get there. Our Lord doesn't give the time, but he does say the time is coming. There is a certainty to his return. Listen to the words of Jesus again, Mark 13, 32, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not, here's the phrase, when the time is. On God's divine timeline, remember God's not in time, time's in God, God's eternal. God holds all of time in the palm of his hand, looks at the end and the beginning at the same time. God lives in the everlasting now, uh, but there is a time that is in the mind and heart of God. Then Jesus gives this amazing parable, this this story to help us understand. For the Son of Man, that was Jesus' favorite title for himself, the title of his humanity and humility, a title that identified him with us in mercy. The Son of Man is as a man taking a far country, a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, 
For you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. In other words, he said, I'm coming. You don't know when I'm coming, but when I come, it will be suddenly. So what do we know? Well, we know he's coming. The time is set. The day, the hour already marked in the eternal plan of God. And we also know that not only will he come, but he could come at any time. Listen to the variety here. That at even, at midnight, at the cock crowing, in the morning, we don't know. But we know this. He is coming at a time that is appointed of the Heavenly Father. Then we also know not only is he coming, he could come at any time, but we know he will come suddenly. That's the Bible word here, suddenly. And it immediately connects us to the last page of the Bible. Because in Revelation chapter number 22, Jesus gave the church some parting encouragement and admonitions. And in that, three times he uses a very similar word. Revelation 22 verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And one final time, a third time, verse 20, he which testifieth these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I wonder how many times he has to say it before we believe him. I wonder how often the Lord has repeat himself before we actually do something about what he said for, for us to do. So what does the word quickly mean? Some people mistakenly thought that when this was written, when John wrote it uh, in the first century after Christ, that, uh, oh, no doubt, you know, very, very shortly he will be here, you know, just a few years. But the word quickly is not a, a time word in the sense of uh, just a few hours or just a few days, though in the great scheme of things, all of this is just a few days compared to eternity. But the word quickly is very similar to the word suddenly that Jesus used in Mark chapter 13, which means when he comes, when he does come, whenever that is, it will happen so quickly, so suddenly, there will be no moment to prepare. I said to a man I love recently who needs the Lord, I'm praying that you will not wait too late. And then I said to him, I'm actually praying you will not wait to the end to try to get right with God, but that you'll get right with God now so that you can enjoy the Lord and be a testimony of the grace of God and bring him glory for much time before you see Jesus. I think there's a whole group of people who think, well, I'll have time. I'll have a moment. Not if Jesus comes suddenly, you won't. Because that moment's going to change everything, both here on earth and for eternity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that great resurrection chapter of the Bible, says it this way, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Did you hear that phrase? Not just in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. There's been a lot of debate about what that means. Is it a blink? Uh, on average, the, the human blink lasts about a tenth of a second. That's a, about 100 milliseconds. That's pretty fast. But most people believe that the twinkling of an eye is even faster than the blink of an eye. Think of the, just the little twinkle in the eye. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a miracle, really, the human eye, how it works, how it functions, how it adjusts. Friend, I just want you to know, faster than you can blink, faster than you can think, Faster than you can change, faster than you can repent, faster than you can pray, faster than you can obey, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming again, and we know this for sure. So let me ask you, if we know this, if this is something we do know, what are we doing about it? For all we know, it seems we respond so little. So if you know Jesus Christ is coming again with certainty, he could come at any moment and he will come suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye, I want to ask you this. What should you do today? What is the decision for Christ you need to make? What is the thing you need to get right with God or with someone else? What is the point of obedience the Lord's prompting you to take or to make and you've not yet done it? Do that because any moment Christ is coming again. Friends, watch and pray. Are you guilty of the sin of prayerlessness? Do you know the mechanics of prayer, the form, the right words, but struggle to pray, to have a consistent prayer life? Scott would like to provide a resource for you that he believes can help create habits of prayer in your life. 
His resource, 30 Days of Prayer, is available for download on our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and also in the show notes. We thank you for listening, and we hope you will join us for each lesson from this series. And may the Lord help us as we seek to have a consistent prayer life. Thank you.